Today we are looking at two affordable full frame cinema zooms, the Dizero Kata Ace and the Chiopt Extreme, both of which are looking to make their way into your kit bag. But which performs better and which one should you grab? Let's check them out. We looked at the original Dizero Kata last year and optically they are identical to the new lenses apart from a slightly expanded image circle which is now rated for 46.5mm. Otherwise the ACE is essentially a better built version of the Kata for longer flange cameras, aka PL, LPL and EF mount. And honestly, these new ACE lenses should have been the lenses that DZO released the last year when they announced them. When it comes to focal length coverage, the Kata ACE series currently consists of a 35-80mm and a 70-135mm both of which have a consistent aperture of T2.9. 35mm may not be wide enough for some, but on full frame, it isn't too bad. I just wish it went a little bit wider. Hopefully DZO brings out a wider zoom, like a 15-30 to to fill this gap. The Chilped Extreme series currently only consists of one zoom, but there should be a longer focal length one coming soon as well. The Chilped Extreme has a range of 28-85mm, to millimeters, with a consistent aperture of T3.2. That's a fantastic range for full frame use. 28mm is a really great start for a general purpose zoom, and 85mm is a really great focal length for close ups on full frame. At the wider end, that 7mm difference between the Dizolo and the Chiopt makes a big difference. There is also a big difference between the two lenses physically. Both Kata Ace weigh pretty close to each other, coming in at roughly 1.7kg per lens, whereas the Chiopt weighs roughly 2.8kg. That is a big difference and the weight of the Chiopt may put more run and gun orientated shooters off as it is a serious lump to run around with handheld. The Katas also have a much, much smaller housing when compared to the Chiopt. It's incredibly impressive how small DZO has made these, even when compared to their Super 35 Pictor zooms. They are a touch longer, but not as wide as them. Both of the currently available zooms are the same size with the same gear placements and very comparable weights. This will make switching lenses with a rigged up camera so much easier. The Chiops has a front diameter of 114mm, whereas both cutters are 80mm. This means that the Chiops is far easier to use with clamp on matte boxes, whereas the cutters will most likely require a step up ring or the purchase of a whole new clamp on adapter, as 80mm isn't super common. The cutter also has a filter thread at the front of the lens, and you can use 77mm screw on filters with it whereas the Chiopt does not have a thread at all. Mechanically, the Kata zooms feel just as good as the rest of the lenses that DZO have put out over the past few years. Iris zoom and focus movements are very consistent with a good amount of resistance to make hand operating nice. The Chiopt also feels good, but I would say a little bit more inconsistent, not only in the rotation resistance, but also in the differences in the resistances between the iris zoom and focus rings. Both have mechanics beyond their price tag, but how accurate those markings are is a different discussion. Each lens features clear focus marks and both have imperial and metric with meters on the left and feet on the right. Both have long focus throws as well, with the Chiopt being roughly 288 degrees and the Katas being 270 degrees. Having accurate focus marks at this price point on zooms is quite a luxury to be honest, especially if you want your lens to be parfocal too. You pretty much have to just sacrifice one over the other. With these being more affordable, the markings will be mass produced and with QC being expensive, inaccuracies here are bound to occur. We also experienced a little bit of backlash with the Chiopt, but this is a pre-production lens. They all have pretty comparable close focus distances, with the Chiopt having a minimum focus distance of 70cm and the Cat is focusing down to 74cm on the 35-80 and 76cm on the 70-135. Both sets of lenses have an interchangeable mount system. The Cata Aces come with a PL mount installed, but also have an EF mount in the box and an optional LPL mount that can be purchased separately. The Chiopt is available in either PL, EF or E mount, and Chiopt have said more are coming too. All of these lenses come with shims for adjusting your back focus, which if you change your mount, you'll most likely need to do. We've made a video covering how to do this, link to that is in the description. Both lenses also come with a support foot as well as risers, which you may need for the cutters and will 100% want to use with the Chiopt. Dizolo has also just announced their Coupe rear filter system, which can be used on both the Vespid Primes as well as the Kata Ace Dooms. This system will come in two different sets, the standard and the artistic, 
The standard will be a set of NDs as well as a UV filter and the artistic bundle will include a black mist, blue streak filter and DIY bokeh filter. They look relatively affordable and could be a really nice system to use with the ACE lenses or the Vespit primes. Here's a quick chart of all the lenses side by side in case you want to compare any of the specs against each other. We set up a little scene in our studio and shot a sequence with the 28-85 Cheopt and the 35-80 Kata Ace at the same focal lengths, camera distance and settings to see the differences between the two in this controlled environment. We are going to let each sequence play out with both lenses and then a split screen at the end of them both. If you want to skip past this, this is the time code to skip to. Let us know what lens you prefer the look of down in the comments. We also shot some more creative test shots with the 70 to 135, as we haven't shot much with that, so we wanted to get a feel for it. And we've also shot with the Cheops and 35 to 80 original Kata in several situations already. So we'll pepper in some more creative orientated shots periodically throughout the video with clear labels stating what lens and camera it was shot with. Thankfully, because all three of these lenses are PL mount, we managed to get all of them onto our lens coverage tool. The original Kata lenses had a rated 43.5 millimeter image circle, but these new ACE versions are now rated for 46.5 millimeters, which means you shouldn't have any issues when using them on VistaVision width sensors. Starting with the 35 to 80, if we look at our tests here, we can see that the lens covers the Raptor sensor really well with only a little bit of light loss towards the corners of frame at some points in the zoom but it performs well and will have no problem covering pretty much every full frame cinema camera. The 70 to 135 has even better coverage, but that's not surprising given that it's a longer focal length lens. When we look at the Cheopt, coverage is great as well. You will only have slight vignetting on wider sensors like the Raptor in its 8K 17x9 mode at 28 millimeters, but stopping down will help this. Past that, you can see a little bit of light fall off towards the corners, but not much. Unsurprisingly, there is better illumination at the longer focal lengths, where illumination is really consistent, especially stopped down. 
If we look at our waveform as we zoom, exposure in the center of the frame is pretty consistent throughout each lens's zoom range. However, in the corners, we can see some variation across all three lenses, which isn't surprising. If you want to see how each lens covers your camera across all the different formats that your camera has to offer, you can head over to our lens coverage tool. Link to that is in the description. For these bokeh examples, we used a Sony Venice 1 shot in its 6K 3x2 mode recording in Exocene ST and then cropped into the 16x9 frame in post for these tests. The Chiop features a 9 blade iris, but our out of focus highlights actually look very circular considering this. T4 looks really good. As you zoom throughout the range, you can see more and more cat's eye bokeh towards the corners of frame, with 85mm being way more pronounced than at 28mm. Characteristics of the bokeh are very consistent though throughout the focal range. If we zoom in on one of our highlights here, we can see that the bokeh has a very defined outline, a tiny bit of texture and a tiny bit of greeny blue fringing, which is a touch better when you stop down. The catters both feature a 16 blade iris, which means that shape is very circular in the center of frame even when stopped down to 5.6 on both lenses. The 35 to 80 characteristic is quite consistent throughout the range. Starting at the wider end, we can see that our out of focus highlights has a very defined edge and a bit of texture throughout the range. As you zoom throughout the range, you can see more and more cat's eye bokeh towards the corners of frame, with 80 mm being way more pronounced than 35 mm. However, it looks like the wider end has a touch more of a defined edge. If we look at the 70 to 135mm performance, it's very similar, which is exactly what we want as these lenses are being sold as a pair. It has the same texture, edge definition, and slight fringing as the wider lens, and very similar bokeh shape in the corners of frame that gets more pronounced as you zoom. A lens's flare characteristic is an incredibly subjective thing that some may like and some may not. For these examples, we grabbed a torch and blasted it down the barrel of each lens. Keeping the camera and light in the same place, we can see how the flare changes as we zoom throughout the lens's focal range. Let us know which you like best down in the comments. When it comes to distortion, the Cheops has some slight barrel distortion on the wider end, which turns into a more pronounced pin cushion at around 55mm onwards. But performance overall is quite good. The Cata 35-80 does show some barrel distortion at its widest focal length, which then turns towards pin cushion at the more telly end of the lens. But this certainly isn't as bad as the performance of the Pictors. The 70-135 Cata is the better out of the three when it comes to distortion, with only some pin cushioning throughout its range, but overall, it's really well controlled. So they all have some level of distortion, but nothing that I would say is massively awful, but it is still something to be aware of when composing your shots, and it's fairly common on zoom lenses to see. When it comes to parfocal performance of each lens, both perform well. Out of the box, the DZO 35-80 needed shimming to get parfocal, but our 70-135 didn't. It performed excellently straight out of the box. The Chiopt also needed some shimming to get it performing close to parfocal, but all three lenses do perform well. However, adjusting these shims will put out the location of your marks, so just bear that in mind. But for the price point that these three zooms are aimed at, this is a compromise you will have to deal with. If you want to learn more about how to shim your lens, we made a video that shows you how to, which I've put a link to in the description below. For our breathing tests, we pulled from close focus to infinity, which not many people will be doing. So breathing may look a touch worse than it actually will be in a real world situation. The 35-80 performs well in regards to breathing. Starting at the wide end, this is where the lens performs best with only a touch of it. However, as you zoom through the range, you start to see more breathing from around the 50mm mark onwards. It then gets a little worse as you hit the telly end, but it performs pretty well when you consider the other factors of the lens's design. The 70-135 has similar performance, but I would say maybe a little bit better than the 35-80. The Chiopt also has good breathing performance, but it definitely gets a touch worse towards the longer focal lengths. I think the performance between them is quite comparable though, but I think the Chiopt may have the edge slightly. Looking at the Chiopt sharpness performance, starting at the wide end, we can see okay center performance wide open with obvious fall off towards the corners of the frame. Aberration is present even down to T5.6, but the corners do bite up a little bit better here. At 35, it's a similar story with center performance biting up at around T4, but if we look at the corners, we can see a clear fall off in performance, and stopping down doesn't really make a massive difference. 
This is a similar story up until about 50 or 55 millimeters where we can see a drop off in performance versus the wider focal lengths. From here, you really wanna be stopping down to T5.6, especially at 85 millimeters if you want to get critical focus. The Chiopt really isn't a super sharp lens. If you really wanna get the most out of it, you either have to shoot at the wide end or at the Mortelli end, stop down to T5.6. However, some people may actually like the look this lens can produce, especially when paired with the good chromatic aberration performance the lens has. Bear in mind that there seem to be new versions of this lens and this is the third version of the lens that we've received, so performance may have been improved since this copy, but the softness at the telly end is something that Cheops are aware of. There is definitely a good difference in performance when we look at the Kata 35 to 80. At 35 mm we can see a big difference in resolving power, especially in the corners wide open versus the Chiopt. Throughout the lens's focal range, performance is good, but it does drop off slightly at 60 mm ish where it doesn't perform quite as well, but the fall off in performance is nowhere near as drastic as the Chiopt. In regards to corner performance, we can see that throughout the range we can see chromatic aberration even when stopped down to T5.6, but we can see an improvement in resolving power as you stop down across the range here too. Overall, performance definitely seems better than the Cheops in this regard. The 70-135 Kata has the best performance out of the three. Performance in the center is really good and consistent throughout the range. It's clean and resolves well even wide open. Throughout the range, corners are much cleaner and sharper than the other two lenses, but there is a bit of blue fringing, but not too much. If you want to see longer versions of all of our test clips, check out the full test video on our Vimeo. Link to that is below. At this price point, there really aren't many other options other than buying stills glass, and for some people, this may be a better option. If you're unsure of the differences between stills and cinema lenses, and want to understand the differences between them, I seriously recommend checking out our guide on the differences via the video linked below. However, if you know you want cinema lenses and these lenses are what you are looking at for your budget, how do you choose between them? Well, both have their pros and cons, which I have listed here. Long story short though, optical design is a balance and what balance you want will come down to your personal preference and what your priorities are. I think the weight and size difference will be one of the biggest determining factors as there is such a drastic difference between the two. Image-wise, I can see both having their own benefits for a different project. I just think the inconsistent sharpness of the Chiopt may put some people wanting a more general purpose lens off, though for narrative or headshot work, this may make it more desirable. When it comes to pricing, the Chiopt comes in at roughly £2,285, excluding VAT, whereas both of the Kata A zooms are roughly £3,082 if purchased separately, or £5,929 if bought in the bundle, as of the recording of this video. So that's roughly an £800 price difference between them, which is quite substantial at this price point. If you want to grab either of them, the links are down below. It's honestly insane what you can get nowadays for your money when it comes to cine lenses. It was only a few years ago that a lens similar in nature to these would have cost a considerable amount more. So it's incredible to see companies like Desido and Cheopt creating more affordable options for full frame now. Since writing this script, Siru have also announced a full frame cinema zoom. But let us know what you would pick out of the two options we've talked about today in the comments below. And if you like the video, please give it a like and maybe even consider subscribing so you don't miss out on our awesome upcoming content. And thank you so much for watching.